Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Poetry in the PM. Yours truly, Jack Wanjanyanti. Hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, today's my last uh, day of poetry for the week. As you guys know, I sign off on the weekends. So um, I was on a search. Uh, oh, thank you to all of our healthcare workers working tirelessly to protect us. We love you guys, doctors, nurses, anyone working in a hospital. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The fight is not over, and we know, and we've not forgotten about you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, what's up, Peter? How you doing, brother? Um, hope Toronto's heating up for you. Um, so today I kind of went on a little bit of a journey uh, on Instagram, which I normally don't do for poetry because I, I tend to kind of want to find um, more classic poetry and, and, and poetry that is kind of from all over the world, that has been sort of documented and well-known and uh, now I think I'm kind of taking this hard left into modern poetry, people of the right now, um, the young men and women and everybody in between who are making poetry right now. And I feel like one of the most active places to find that is Instagram. And I found some amazing um, uh, people and accounts to follow um, who have some amazing poetry. Um, and I found this one... Um, young woman uh, named Lady Leo Poetry. So let me just write her thing so you guys can follow her. Lady Leo Poetry. There we go. And then can we pin it? Can we pin it today? Do we know how to pin? Can we figure out the pin? Can we get the pin happening? Look at that. It's a beautiful pin. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, so um, there's some beautiful poets on, on, on Instagram and short and sweet. And I think yesterday, not yesterday, the other day, uh, Wednesday, I believe I was reading some of this guy named Christopher Poindexter, um, who, if you guys um, you know are into poetry, uh, certainly check his stuff out. It's very, very cool, um, very deep. Um, and uh, I just think he has some really amazing wit about him and the way he writes. So today uh, is from, so it says CM, I think her name is Cassie uh, or Casey. Um, and her, she goes by Lady Leo Poetry on Instagram, but she's got a lot of really great stuff. Uh, so definitely check her out if, uh, if you want to uh, do that. Um, before jumping into the poetry, I definitely, definitely, definitely uh, have to speak about something, which is that um, uh, a man named George Floyd was murdered um, recently in Minneapolis um, uh, by a horrible, horrible man um, and many other complicit men of the Minneapolis uh, police force. And um, luckily he's been arrested and... Um, but uh, but he's not been charged yet, and um, uh, you know people need to pay uh, for, for what's being done in America right now. Um, too uh, too many uh, black and brown folk are getting murdered by policemen in America, and uh, it's it's not that it's happening more. It's just it's just being filmed more. That's all that's happening. There's no rise or spike um, in this. Uh, it's always been happening. Um, it's just being filmed more and people are starting to be held accountable more. And with each person uh, arrested, charged, convicted, imprisoned, we get a step closer uh, to, to having, um, to having um, you know, a real system that is awake, that is aware, uh, that knows that these things will not be tolerated and therefore we won't get into these situations in the first place. Unfortunately, in America, I still think we're far away from that, but we're seeing a lot of change. And I just want to say, if you're in Minneapolis and you are in the black and brown community, um, I'm, I'm with you guys. I stand with you guys. I understand your frustration. And um, I, I can only imagine uh, how angry you are. And I can, uh, you know, I don't think violence is necessarily the way um, to go about it, but doing things by the book haven't worked yet. So I totally, totally, totally stand with you and respect that you got to do what you got to do. Um, you know, it's, it's just becoming way too normal. 
Um, and, you know, people like this police officer and many others, um, you know, we just had that young other black gentleman, um, Ahmad, who was shot while he was jogging. And, you know, these things are just happening way too often. Uh, but luckily they're being filmed. And so we're actually able to have proof, hold people accountable. Um, the justice system is slow and often corrupt. Uh, but with every person that we convict and put away, um, you know, we're, we're able to move move closer to a world. You know, there's got to be a big change. It has to happen from the top down. Um, you know, if you read some of the articles around this police officer, officer, he had 18 different complaints upon him. And, you know, there needs to be a system where um, way before 18 complaints do you get a review and maybe a firing or, or you know, serious uh, correctional um, uh, um, measures taken. Um, someone with that many complaints, certainly violent complaints, uh, shouldn't just be allowed to have a badge and a gun. Um, so um, there really needs to be a restructuring of the, the police force system uh, here in America and the way all of that is done. And um, it's a long journey. Uh, people like Sean King are doing incredible work. Uh, Van Jones, I know you guys, uh, everyone at his team are doing incredible work. Um, so please follow them if you haven't. And definitely get a scoop on that. They're always so apt and, you know, well-informed and, 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 you know, disseminating um, all the uh, essential um, uh, information that you need. That's whether that's like calling people, signing petitions. Um, you know, Sean King just makes it so easy and accessible to get a hold of that stuff, uh, sign it and get involved. Because, of course, you know, we're not all in Minneapolis and certainly with this pandemic, there's very little things that we can do from here, but we can use our social media. We can call representatives. We can sign petitions. We can uh, show our support uh, to the people um, and uh, and share. You know, so this this gentleman George Floyd did not have to die in vain. Um, it's it's just unfortunately another sad story of a black man murdered um, in America, and um, it just it just cannot uh, continue. Um, it cannot continue. Um, so again, guys, um, you know, I'm going to jump into some poetry, but, um, I try to consider myself a pretty informed person and, um, I, I just didn't see it was right to, to continue the, the poetry without at least first speaking on, uh, you know, George Floyd and, and, and many other people who still have not gotten justice to this day, uh, because we lacked, um, you know, evidence or video footage, uh, to convict. So um, to all those people affected by these tragedies, my heart's with you. And I'm, I'm so, so sorry that uh, you're having to go through uh, this moment. And I hope that legislation and things change and we can stop having these situations. Um, so um, uh, again, everybody in Minneapolis, so sorry. And I'm with you. And uh, let me know what we can do. Um, definitely uh, your ally. Um, let me see what somebody wrote. What's your opinion on the rumors going around that LGBTQ people are going to be attacked on social media? I haven't heard that rumor and I don't know for what reason they would be attacked, but of course that's a horrible thing and I, and I, I don't support that. Um. I think the LGBTQ community is always under attack, um, you know, in, in big and small ways, um, depending on where you live. Um, so uh, that's another, that's a whole other plight, a whole other battle, a whole other war uh, going on. Um, so um, my heart's with you guys too. Um, all right, I am going to shift gears, I'm going to jump into this poetry. Um, again, uh, this, this young woman named Casey, she goes under the name of Lady Leo Poetry has written this beautiful poem, so I'm gonna read it for you guys. And, um... Oh, somebody's following up. June, oh, June 1st, people are going to bombard LGBTQ plus on social media with hate. Well then, we're gonna fight back uh, with love. And I'm 100% positive that we're gonna get way more posts, shares, likes, tweets, than all those stupid hater ignorant people. So um, we'll fight back and make their um, seemingly loud voices quiet very quickly. So you heard it here. Um, I guess some people are trying to band together to hate on 
um, LGBTQ plus people on June 1st. So if you can write something against that and a message of love for all of those people, uh, the new Quillen forever justice for George. Thanks. Thank you for, for writing that. Yes. Um, and, uh, so, so yeah, uh, let's just basically combat hate. Uh, there's no room for it. It serves no purpose. Um, uh, if you know me, um, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Marvin Gaye. I, I think he's one of the most incredible people, not just artists, but people that have ever lived. I literally got his albums framed up on my record wall here in my bar. This is all Marvin Gaye albums. Um, let's get it on. What an incredible album live. Um, you know, so um, this is my poem that I'm bringing. Um, and, you know, if you listen to Marvin Gaye's music, who also unfortunately had a really tragic death. Um, but, you know, Marvin Gaye's music is all about spreading love. Love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. Happiness, happiness, happiness. Peace, peace, peace. Um, it's the world that he envisioned for all of us. It's the world that I envision. And, you know, when we we read these horrible stories of these people getting getting killed and, you know, we think of maybe starting a family someday and having children. This is not the future that, that I want for my child. And it's not the future that you want for your child. Um, when you see, I said this the other day, when you see, there's all these videos of, of, of babies and, and children on Instagram who are of different races all playing together and, and loving each other and hugging each other and kissing each other and playing games and laughing and embracing each other. Um, that's because they don't know what race is, because nobody knows what race is, because it was inherited and taught. It was the only ways you can be racist and prejudiced. It has to be inherited to you from your family and has to be taught to you and explained to you. Um, you can only be taught to hate. You don't, you're not born with a hate in your heart. You're just not. Nobody is. Um, so um, uh, let's just love more. And, uh, you know, try to help each other where we can and just realize we're all human beings on this planet trying to survive and trying to provide for our families. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're all trying to do. So, um, yes, race is a social construct. It doesn't actually even exist. Correct. Very good. Yes. Um, I will say that, like, you know, we are different. Um, we are different people. Uh, we have different cultures. And we have different histories, more importantly. And there was a time ago where I think it was um, kind of popular um, for white people, uh, especially, um, in, in, in trying to seem like allies um, of saying, I don't see color, uh, thinking it was, you know, politically correct. But it's actually quite insulting. Um, because if you say that you don't see color, it means you're actually not seeing and acknowledging who that person is and the history um, that their culture and, and community has, has had, um, that you're not acknowledging that they are truly original and individual, and they are different from us. Um, not that that's in a bad way, or that we're better than them or worse than them. Um, we are just different. Uh, we are cut from a different cloth, and we have different histories and backgrounds and cultures and music and art that shaped our communities and our, our, our races. And so um, to say that you don't see color is, is to not acknowledge that whole person's soul and being. So, um, you know, say, yes, I, I, I do see color, but I don't have a problem with color. I, I love all colors and I embrace all colors. Um, so um, that's, that's more um, what you gotta focus on. So, um, I see color, but I don't push aside people for color. Brian579 uh, or Bryn579, thank you for saying that. Yeah, exactly. Um, great comment. It's disregarding their history and culture, Maya. Uh, Maya Bragg too, yeah, thank you. Um, exactly, so um, without further ado, I'm gonna jump into this poem and um, I'm going to dedicate it to George Floyd because um, just seemed like an incredible man who was taken from us too soon, and um, this poem's for him. I don't know how to give in halves. I don't know how to string myself together and store the excess for later. I don't know how to wake up 
and not reach for you. I don't know how to be something you reach back for. I don't know how to have claws that don't heat seek. I don't know how to mildly exist. I don't know how to stop my laugh from bellowing off the roof of a three-story building. I don't know how to hold you without it being for dear life. I don't know how to trace skin without drawing blood. I don't know how to love you any less. I don't know how to love you any more. I don't know how to love you any less. I don't know how to love you anymore. How many ways do I have to say it before it becomes just enough? Beautiful poem uh, by Lady Leo Poetry here. Um, Casey, Cassie. Um, uh, anyway, so um, I just thought it was a beautiful poem. Um, it's about love. It's about loving to our fullest, um, which from all the stories I've heard about uh, George Floyd, uh, he did and had a lot of loved ones and, and people that loved him very much. And um, there's, a, there's a great um, line in the poem that says, um, I don't know how to mildly exist. Um, I relate to that very much. Um, and um, I think we all should. Um, that uh, to, to simply exist uh, does not cut it. Um, someone said, read the title of the poem. I don't know the title of the poem. But if you go to Lady Leo Poetry, which I have pinned here on my Instagram... Um, you can find this very poem. Um, it's like a couple rows down. Um, you can find it. Um, it kind of looks like this. Here, I'll show you. This is what I'm reading off of on my iPad. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that? So yeah, this is the picture on, on, uh, on her Instagram. And this is kind of how it's laid out. So you can uh, search for it that way. Um... Yeah, so I don't know how to how to mildly exist. I don't know how to mildly exist either. I want to live life to the fullest. I want to, you know, make my dreams come true. I want to be of service to others. I want to um, help other people uh, achieve their dreams. I want to be a good partner, a good son, a good friend. Um, um, I want to make my dog's life very happy. Um, and uh, so, you know, um, how do we just mildly exist. Uh, we can't. We mustn't. Uh, we mustn't settle for the ordinary. Um, not that there's not moments in life where it's okay to be ordinary or relax or take the heat off uh, or pressure off of what you're doing. We don't always have to be, you know, striving for our dreams and hustling and grinding like, you know, a lot of our current uh, culture. Um, never settle for mediocrity. Exactly. That's right. Um, so, um, you know, um, oh, beautiful B X T A C H. Good night to me. Okay. Good night. Um, Italian word of the day. Okay. Um, talking about love today, that the only way to combat hate, um, and war and racism and prejudice is with love. And so, um, Today's Italian word of the day is amore, which is love. Um, amore, it's a beautiful word. Lots of tunes in it. Um, lots to work with there. Lots of vowels, of course, the Italian language. Um, so um, think about the things that, that you love um, and um, see in ways, in which ways maybe you can... Um, Elevate your life, I guess. Um, somebody wrote, don't settle for mediocrity. But, you know, there's moments that mediocrity is okay. There's nothing wrong with mediocrity. But we can't stay in that gear. We must shift gears um, uh, occasionally to, uh, to um, allow for that. Um, what's some other really good lines from this poem? Oh, I love, I don't know how to wake up and not reach for you. I don't know how to be something you reach back for. Um, so I think a lot, it's funny, in a lot of, 
a lot of um, speech about love and relationships, I think um, we talk about being worthy, uh, worthy of love. And um, I think I talked about the other day that the, the way you get love, the way you find love is by loving yourself first and being fully, fully uh, able to love yourself for who you truly are. Um, all the good and all the bad. And really digging deep on it and, and being able to have a profound understanding of, of um, your life, the way you were raised, the things you want, your desires, your traumas, all mixed into this person that is you and, and, and how that you can make um, and accept this person as being beautiful and worthy. And when you're in that place, um, you're like a homing beacon for love. Um, so um, in terms of like, you know, in this poem saying, I don't know how to be something that you reach back for, um, you know, it's like saying like, I don't know how to be worthy of, of you, of, of, of your love. And I think um, I was listening to this podcast uh, of Whitney Cummings. Um, if you don't follow Whitney Cummings, definitely follow her. She's uh, game for a laugh, I'll say. Um, she's certainly been a good, uh, respite from, from this, uh, hard time. She always brings a laugh, has great guests on her podcast and they're all, um, videoed as well as so you can watch them. Um, but he had, she had a guest on her podcast. His name is Steve-O. Of those of you who grew up in late eighties and stuff, um, like I did, um, or born in the late eighties rather, uh, and grew up in the nineties and two thousands, um, Steve-O was one of the members of the Jackass uh, community who uh, made these amazing shows where they would do stunts and just the craziest uh, stuff. Um, since then, Steve-O has become you know, sober on many fronts, uh, quite a wise man, and has been doing really well, um, and has been talking a lot about his life and his recovery. And he has been recently... Um, you know, in a, in a relationship uh, for a couple of years and found the love of his life, his soulmate. And in speaking with Whitney, he shared, I had to become the person that the love of my life would be able to see and fall in love with. Because at the current state where I was heading and where I was going and who I was and how I was acting, there was no way anybody would fall in love with me. And so it's not to shame who you are or your current situation, but wanting to get better, wanting to improve upon yourself, wanting to break through uh, different emotional barriers that you have or, or setbacks, um, you know, in your life. And so he's like, I had to do the work. I did the work. I did therapy. I did exercise. I got clean. I did all these things because I wanted love. Um, and I knew that I was worthy of it, but in my current state, I just knew that that person would never see me. They would look right through me. Um, and he says, as soon as I got my act together, I met this wonderful woman and we've been together ever since. And, and, uh, because the person that I had trained myself to become who wasn't not me, it was me. It was the me I always wanted to be and never had the courage to become. So... Um, once, once I became that person, this superhero version of myself that I always wanted to be, then the universe allowed, you know, opened the door for this incredible person to walk into my life. Um, and then I had to take it from there. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but at least the opportunity was presented. And I think that's true in, in which with, with friendships, relationships, all kinds of relationships that they find you in moments, uh, for a reason, um, but I think, you know, uh, striving to be better versions of ourselves every day, even in small ways, um, is, is a great way to just get better. And um, so I'll leave you with that. Um, again, I don't know what this name of the, the poem was, but uh, her name's Lady Leo Poetry, and you can find some poetry first. Um, let me go to some of your questions and comments for a little bit, and then I'm going to sign off. Maya Bragg too. Everyone come who cross paths with comes in your life for re, comes into your life for a reason. Yes, um, you should get Sarah Rafferty on here. She posts beautiful poems on her page. I'm 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 definitely trying to. Uh, it's not without trying for sure. Soy three thousand. Great words, man. Clap 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 clap. Thank you.
switched us to the beach yesterday? I don't know what that means. Oh, hold on. My mother is saying something. I think, unfortunately, the media has made us feel that we are less or not up to the bar, especially for young people. Definitely. Yeah, and that's something that I keep talking about, that, you know, the current generation uh, of young people, which is like, you know, my my sister, who is, you know, 20 years old. Um, that generation grew up in a time where, you know, all this social media and, and comparison um, and... Um, just exacerbated versions of, of beauty uh, all throughout the media and having them all right in our hands, you know. And before it's like we'd had to go to the grocery store in the checkout aisle and then you'd see a, a magazine telling you that, that you weren't skinny enough. But you have this thing in your freaking hand all day telling you you're not skinny enough, you're too this, you're too that, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too brown, you're too white, you're too this, you're too that. And it's like, uh, it's perpetual. And, and so, uh, of course, you know, the current generation is being raised with higher percentages of, of, of mental illness and insecurities and depression and anxiety and all these things. Uh, I'm not saying social media is the sole reason. Parenting has a lot to do with it. Um, you can raise an amazing kid in a hard world if you put in the work, but not a lot of people are willing to put in the work and reinforce, um, you know, uh, self-esteem and all of those things. So, um, but I will give them, I will give the current generation this, that yes, you do have it harder. You are combating, a, you know, a bigger demon than, than we did. You know, my, my generation even growing up, you know, the contact with all that stuff was, was so minimal. Um, and we have sort of only now kind of inherited into um, our day-to-day. -day. Yeah, someone said parenting is so important. Yeah, I mean... You, you, you got to raise your kids with thick skin and, and, you know, just not only tell them that they're worthy, but you have to make them, um, believe that they're worthy. Right. So like, you got to train them to, to, um, be able to actually be independent and accomplish things on their own and have, uh, self-esteem for themselves so that they're not relying on self-esteem from other people. If I had to wait for a compliment from somebody else to ha to hold my self esteem together, oh my God, what a what a horrible horrible life to live. I can give myself a compliment. I can say, hey, you look great today. I can say, hey, you you feel great today, or that meal that you cooked this morning was amazing. You know what I mean? And I give myself self esteem. You know, I don't need someone else to. Sure, it's beautiful when somebody else compliments you and makes you feel good about yourself, but that is not a currency that you want to enter in in terms of like a, a normal regimented thing like that that's where i get my self esteem other people like other people companies media that that's where my self esteem is derived from we, you cannot go down that lane again that's that comes down to parenting having having to reinforce that so kids know that because if you're not told that or taught that there's no way you can know that um so um again we should be able to love ourselves without the need for validation from others absolutely um, what else we got here? Grazie italiani che capite inglese che state traducendo, uh, vi apprezzo molto. Uh, season 16 is actually on Netflix, uh, at least in America, I'm sorry. Did you see what Trump said? He sucks. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, uh, did you find a park for jazz? I actually went to a beach yesterday in LA and uh, it was really beautiful. And um, I posted a little picture of jazz on the beach and he had a great time. He was with all these other dogs, just having the best time. Um, he was exhausted though. Um, Ireland. Hello from Ireland, my other half. Oh, someone says season 16 is now on TV in the UK. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. So yeah, you guys in the UK, go get it. Um... Do you split your time between LA, Toronto? LA, Toronto, and Rome. Um, 
My family is in Canada and Italy, so that's kind of where I spent my time. I'm in Los Angeles for work. I work here. Um, do I live here? Yes, because I have to stay here for most of the year because I work. But, you know, ideally I, I would be in Italy or, or Canada. I have one of my best friend's birthdays on June 1st, Sid. Oh, and I have to miss it and I'm so sad. Gonna be there with you in spirit, Sid. Um, uh, Christina, oops, sorry. Christina Thorl says, I work in healthcare and I'm exhausted at the end of the week and your stream brightened my day. Thank you so much for saying that and thank you for your service, really appreciate you. Thank you for the cameo you did for my husband Kendrick's birthday. My pleasure. Hope it was. I hope he liked it. Um, uh, Sai parlare in italiano? Certo, però tanti di voi parlano in inglese, loro parlano in inglese. Però se c'è qualcuno in italiano che vuole parlare, possiamo parlare anche in italiano. Um, I'm just trying to answer some Italian people who who come because obviously they deserve to be answered as well. Um, How's your family in Italy? Seems things are opening up there again. Yeah, um, you know, they're doing okay. It's been a very tough time. Uh, certainly, um, the financial impact uh, is crippling. Uh, but uh, things are starting to slowly open up. You know, Italians are very social creatures. I mean, look, human beings are social creatures, but Italians are especially social. You know, um, we have a sort of thing called aperitivo, which is sort of like a happy hour, but it's a daily thing. And I mean, we're always social. I mean, Italians are, are before work, during work, after work, always socializing, always around bars, a drink, a coffee, a little biscuit or something, a croissant. Like, it's we, we love to eat and share and talk and, and laugh together. And so we're a very very tight-knit social culture. So this removing was like, it was like a kryptonite for, for Italians and many Europeans and people who are very social, social countries. Um, and, um, let me just, sorry, my phone's dying. There we go. Um, you know, so it's like a kryptonite being like, oh, we're known for being the life of the party and then we can't, you know, go to any parties and see people. It's, it was horrible. Um, and you know, so many people lost their lives and, and so, but yes, things are starting to open up. So hopefully people can kind of start to go back to a new normal. Favorite Italian dish, carbonara or uh, risotto a crema dei scampi? Tartufata. Um, all right. What are you doing in quarantine? Been uh, cycling a lot uh, for exercise. I'm trying to do 40K every other day, and it's been going well. Oh, okay, hold on. Paul Vega. It's about energy. There's a lot of people that have problems, and we are like sponges. So it's very necessary to relax and take away bad energies. Yes, I agree, definitely. Do you have any secret talents you've been working on? <laughs> uh, yeah, trying not to drink during the week. That's the secret talent I've been working on. And I'm not doing well. Um, Do you have a favorite comic book character? It's so boring, but Spider-Man, like I just love Spider-Man so much. Just being able to zip around in the city and, you know, it's like the next best thing to flying, you can soar. Um, just the freedom it would give you. Um, yeah. The strength, the web zipping and then sticking on the buildings. Um, I would love that. That sounds so much fun. Also, just like super energy efficient and good for carbon footprint, right? No energy, you know, no gas, no electricity, super uh, green. You know what I mean? Just tew, 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 tew. Um, and uh, yeah, so being Spider-Man is good for the planet. It's not talked enough about. Okay. It's not a drinking problem. It's a schedule. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. A-G-L-F. 
Do you like shopping? I'm not a shopper. My wife always tells me I never buy anything. Um, uh, non capisco nulla. Scusa Sabrina. Chiedimi una domanda e ti rispondo. What tricks can Jazz do? Um, he's really good at sleep all day. That's a, his favorite trick. He's really good at that. Say sleep all day and he goes, okay, and then he just sleeps all day. So he's very, very good at that. Mm, Brazil. When will you come to India? Ooh, love to come to India. Oh, I love Indian food so much. I think Indian food is my second favorite food after Italian, of course. I've been eating like Indian food every now and then from this place um, here in LA with like butter chicken, tikka masala, um, it's amazing rotis and pakoras, samosas, um, so good. Come to Cape Town, give me a ticket, I'm there. Um, Richie Boy and then a bunch of numbers favorite book um, I really like Lives of the Saints by Nino Richie growing up um, to date my favorite book um, I don't know let me look at my library um, you know what this is definitely one of my favorite I'm not going to say what my favorite book is but um, this is uh, Stephen King's On Writing um, this is an amazing book if you're a writer obviously you're going to get way more out of it or if you want to start writing and learn how to write it's a great book um, but it's it's a memoir you know it's Stephen King talking about how he grew up and how he got into writing and the adversity that he faced and, and it's just a really quick read and it's a beautiful story and it's like really romantic he talks about like listening to Fats Domino and like he passed away I think a year or two ago, amazing, amazing artist. If you don't know about Fats Domino, listen to Fats Domino. Wow, what an amazing musician and what an amazing time for music. Um, but yeah, uh, Stephen King on writing, definitely, definitely one of my favorite books for sure. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to sign off. So again, um, how come you have zero accent? Because I was raised speaking both. So the way you have an accent is if you apply a language to an accent that you already have or a language that you already have. If you grow up speaking multiple languages, then there's nothing that you're applying it on top of. You're learning it simultaneously. So I learn Italian and English simultaneously and therefore I don't have an accent. Um, in Italian, I have a little bit of a Roman accent. I'm a little naughty. I got a little bit of a Roman accent that my nonna always reminds me of. Per voi italiani, mi hanno chiesto se ho un accento. Per, anzi, perché non ho un accento. Ho detto in inglese no, però in, ita in italiano un po' di un accento romano ce l'ho perché sono da Roma. Eh, però la mia nonna, Fiorentina, eh, spesso mi, mi dà schiaffi per il mio romano perché lei è Fiorentina, dove si parla l'italiano insomma più pulito. E, e frequentemente mi dice: Dai, devi, devi parlare corretto, basta con questo romano. Uh, allora provo con nonna di, di parlare più um, pulito però mi piace il romano la carbonara dai um, uh, ok and all you English speaking people were like what the hell was that Italian word of the day I already told you it's amore love to lead with love and amore and with that I'm going to sign off everybody lead with love lead with amore more love um, and justice for George Floyd. We love you guys. Bye.